You're asking yourself two burning questions right now. Well, the first answer depends on whether the glass is half full, half empty, or the glass is twice as big as it really needs to be. Being a nuts and bolts man, I favour the third answer. However, the second one I can answer. That is the age-old question. What is the difference between a grandfather, grandmother and granddaughter clock? So let's first find out how domestic clocks came to be. Sundials were used as far back as the Egyptian period, around 1500 BC, and commonplace in ancient Greece and Roman times. If they were built correctly and correctly orientated, they could measure local solar time to within a minute. But of course, local solar time isn't clock time. So you needed a table showing the different corrections to be made and that would vary throughout the year. This portable sundial example of 1710 could be accurate to within a minute. The sundial placed near the entrance of the Gram and Kirk in Edinburgh indicated the time for the Sunday service. Timekeeping was also measured uh, by the rate at which a candle burned or the rate at which water drips out of the tank. The first mechanical clocks were early verge escapements when they dated back to the 13th century. They were large weight driven open frame clocks and they were used mainly as turret clocks. Unfortunately they were only accurate to about 15 minutes a day. The first domestic clocks were iron clocks or brass lantern clocks. They hung on the wall and the weights hung below them. To wind the clock, usually the weights had to be pulled up twice a day. The development of the winding spring made the first portable clock possible and the first examples appeared around 1450. They were made of brass and used the verge escapement. The Dutch physicist and horologist Christian Huygens, who was 1629 to 1695, was the first to apply a pendulum to timekeeping in mechanical clocks in 1656. He used it with a verge escapement, which improved the accuracy to 15 seconds a day. His design, though clever as it was, was not successful due to the wide pendulum swing of up to 100 degrees which was needed by the verge escapement to work. Clearly putting this escapement into a long case clock would have looked silly. Clockmakers realised that by adopting the pendulum as a controller, the greater the length and consequently the slower the oscillation of the pendulum, the more accurate would be the control. With the invention of the anchor escapement around 1760, this problem was resolved and a pendulum swing of 4 to 6 degrees made the long case clock become practical. The pendulum length of 1 metre, 39.37 inches, would give a swing of 1 second and that became widely used and it allowed a minute and a second hand to be added to the clock dial face. The long case clock became a handsome piece of furniture. The case protected the pendulum from kids and passing dogs and protected the mechanism from dust, which is one of the big problems of the lantern clocks as a timekeeper. So now finally to answer your question, how did the long case clock become known as the grandfather clock? And what's the differences between the grandfather, grandmother and granddaughter clocks? My Grandfather's Clock was a popular song written in 1876 by Henry Clay Work. The song told from a grandchild's point of view is about his grandfather's clock. The clock is purchased in the morning of the grandfather's birth and works perfectly for 90 years, requiring only that it be wound at the end of each week. The clock seems to know the good and the bad events in the grandfather's life. It rings 24 chimes when the grandfather brings his bride into his house 
and near his death it rings an alarm which the family recognises to mean that the grandfather is near death and gathers by his bed. After the grandfather dies, the clock suddenly stops and never works again. The song has been covered many times and became an instant classic. The Oxford English Dictionary credits the song with popularising the term Grandfather Clock, which you'll appreciate is a more catchy name than the drab title Long Case Clock. Grandfather clocks are between six and seven and a half feet tall and are generally agreed to measure at least six foot three inches in height. The solid timber cases are often ornate with engraved brass dials which were later placed with painted dials in the early 1800s. Due to their size, they would often have more elaborate chimes and were seen as status symbols displaying the owner's wealth. Grandmother clocks are a smaller version of the grandfather clock. They are also nicely decorated and often have a moon dial. They are usually between five and six foot tall and they came in around 1930 when they fitted more effectively into the smaller home. Granddaughter clocks are typically between four and five feet tall. The cases are typically made of plywood, but often nicely veneered to provide the elegance of the grandfather clock. Many granddaughter clocks have electroplated dials and painted numbers instead of an engraved face. Pendulums, due to the case size, are shorter in length. Well, I'll leave it there. But I'll leave you with this final thought. Ticking clocks are a bit like Marmite. You either love them or you hate them. But in this busy world of high-stressed work that we all now live in, you can't beat the sound of a grandfather clock when you get home with its seconds ticking beat of the pendulum. It slows you down and relaxes you. And this is why the grandfather clock will always be a treasured possession. A piece of furniture that no home should be without. <laughs>